Hello, friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Before we take you to your favorite Sports History Network show, just want to tell you a little bit about some merch that you can pick up that represents your favorite SHN podcast. So far, there's t-shirts, coffee mugs, and even books from some of the authors that do podcasts right here on SHN. Who could buy something better than that than have the history right from the, the gentleman that you hear talking about it? But we also are adding things each and every day. And where's that store, may you ask? Well, it's at SportsHistoryNetwork.com. Up at the top, there is the SHN. HN merch button. Click on that. It'll take you right to the store and you can be representing your favorite podcast and show the world that, hey, on the swag that I'm using, it's the headquarters of sports yesteryear, Sports History Network, and my favorite podcaster, the Sports History Network store. Shop there today. Now it's time to take a sports break, a look at sports history on a daily basis. Hello, my friends of sports history. This is Darren Hayes of the Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. Welcome once again to your sports break in the pig pen, your portal to positive all things great in sports. And we have a great sports break for you today, talking about the greatest athletes in the greatest events that happened on October 3rd, along with their uniform numbers. Before we do, we want to make sure that you know how to subscribe to our email newsletter each and every day, 6.30 a.m. in your email inbox. You just go to the show notes of this very podcast, click on email, subscribe, or at pigskin dispatch or jersey dispatch follow the same rules now your uniform numbers we'll talk about today there's quite a few of them 26 28 23 13 7 34 35 14 and number 11 16 19 27 20 45 and 4 at 25 21 77 24 51 and the number eight on the jerseys we're going to start off in the year 1904 october 3rd new york giants pitcher christy matthewson struck out 16 st louis cardinals in a three to one giants victory it was a new major league baseball record and it really shortened the length of the game as the contest finished in just one hour and 15 minutes October 3rd, 1919, Cuban player Dolph Luke became the first Hispanic player to play in a baseball World Series. During the contest, Luke pitched one inning of relief in Cincinnati Reds' 3-0 loss at the hands of the Chicago White Sox at Comiskey Park. October 3rd, 1920, St. Louis Browns first baseman George Sisler collected his 257th hit of the season to set a Major League Baseball record that lasts until the 21st century. The Browns beat the White Sox that day, 16 to seven was the score. October 3rd, 1945, the Detroit Tigers and Chicago Cubs met in the World Series for a record fourth time at the time. Hank Bowery, number 26, pitched a six-hit shutout as the Cubs win game one, nine to nothing at Briggs Stadium. Detroit ended up winning that World Series four games to three. October 3rd, 1950, the Philadelphia Phillies choose not to request a Major League Baseball rule on star left-hander number 28, Kurt Simmons' eligibility to play in the World Series, despite being on furlough from the Army. Well, the Phillies swept 4 nothing by the Yankees. They were, were swept by the Yankees for games to nothing. October 3rd, 1951, the famous shot heard around the world occurred when Bobby Thompson, number 23 of the Giants, crushed a three-run homer off of number 13, Ralph Bronca of the Brooklyn Dodgers, in the bottom of the ninth inning, one out, to give the New York Giants a dramatic 5-4 playoff win and a National League pennant at the Polo Grounds in New York City. October 3rd, 1953, New York Yankees legendary center fielder number seven, Mickey Mantle, hits a grand slam off of the Dodgers number 34, Russ Meyer. The Bronx Bombers hold on to win it 11 7 versus the Dodgers in game five of the World Series. The Yankees eventually won that series four games to two. October 3rd, 1956, Sal Magley, number 35, pitched a complete game as the Brooklyn Dodgers beat the Yankees 6-3 in Game 1 of the Baseball World Series at Ebbets Field. The Yankees ended up winning that series too, but this time four games to three. October 3rd, 1965, the Chicago Cubs lost their season finale 6-3 to the Pirates. In the game, though, Ernie Banks, number 14, and Don Kessinger, number 11, combined to tie a Major League Baseball record of three triple plays in a single season. October 3rd, 1965, the New York's number 16, Whitey Ford, notched win number 232 in his career in a season-ending 11-5 victory versus the Boston Red Sox. With that victory, he became the Yankees' winningest pitcher. 
October 3rd, 1972. Future Baseball Hall of Fame left-handed pitcher, Phillies number 32, Steve Carlton, won his 27th game of the season as Philadelphia beat the Chicago Cubs 11-1 at Wrigley Field. Carlton accounted for almost half of the Phillies' season wins. They had 59 wins. He had 27 of them. October 3rd, 1972, Rora Carrison, number 44, homered as the Baltimore Orioles defeated the Cleveland Indians 4-3. He was the last American League pitcher to hit a home run until Major League Baseball interleague play some 25 years later. October 3rd, 1974, future Baseball Hall of Fame guard, number 44, Jerry West, also known as Mr. Clutch, retired after 14 NBA seasons with the LA Lakers. West had 25,192 career points and averaged 29.1 points per game in 153 playoff games. October 3rd, 1982, center fielder Robin Yount, number 19, homered twice as the Milwaukee Brewers ended up beating up on the Baltimore Orioles 10-2 at Memorial Stadium to win the Brewers' only American League East championship. Of course, we know they switched over to the National League some years later. October 3rd, 1989, Daryl Sittler, number 27, Vladishaw Tritak, number 20, and Herbie Lewis, well, his number, I think it's sort of, we've lost that one to time, were each inducted into Hockey Hall of Fame as players, along with builders, Alan Eagleson and father, David Bauer. October 3rd, 1990, the Detroit first baseman Cecil Fielder, number 45, became just the 11th player in Major League Baseball history to hit 50 home runs in a season. His 50th and a 51st were hit in a 10-3 win versus New York Yankees at Yankee Stadium. October 3rd, 1990, Kansas City third baseman, number 5, George Brett, becomes the first in Major League Baseball history to win a batting title in three different decades. In the game, Brett went one for one in the Royals' 5-2 loss to Cleveland to win the American League battle batting title with a 329 average and the American League batting champion 1976 and 80 for both his. October 3rd, 1999, St. Louis first baseman Mark McGuire, number 25, hits his 65th homer of the season in a rain shortened 9 to 5 victory over the Cubs at Bush Stadium. He wins a second straight home run title over Sammy Sosa, number 21 of the Cubs, who hit his 63rd home run in that same game. October 3rd, 2001, after a 21 season career, Paul Coffey, mostly wearing number 77 during his career, officially retires from the NHL, having won four Stanley Cups with the Edmonton Oilers, finishing second all on the all time list of four points by a defenseman, 1,531 in 1,409 games, and playing in 14 All Star games. October 3rd, 2001, San Diego outfielder Ricky Henderson, number 24, scored a run in the third inning of the Padres, 12 to 5 loss to the LA Dodgers to tie a Major League Baseball record of 2,245 runs scored, held by the legendary Ty Cobb for a career. October 3rd, 2001, the San Francisco Giants slugger Barry Bonds, number 25, is walked for the 171st time in an 11 to 8 win at Houston breaks Babe Ruth's 1923 Major League Baseball single season record for walks. October 3rd, 2004, Seattle Mariners Japanese right fielder number 51 Ichiro Suzuki adds two more singles in a 3-0 defeat to Texas to finish the season as the Major League Baseball record 262 hits for that batter. October 3rd, 2012, Miguel Cabrera, number 24, went 0 for 2 in the batter's box in a 1-0 Tigers win over the KC Royals to end the season as Major League Baseball's first triple crown crown winner since Boston's number 8, Carl Yastrzemski, in 1967. He led the American League with a 330 average, 44 home runs, and 139 runs batted in. And that is your history for October 3rd. There's your sports break. Glad you could join us here once again. Hope you'll join us each and every day and talk to you tomorrow. Till next time, have a great Sports History Day. Sorry, but my pitching coach just called timeout and he's coming out to the mound. I think I'm going to get yanked for a reliever. We'll see you back tomorrow for some more great sports history on Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. We invite you to check out our websites, jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com. Not only see the daily sports history, but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games. Find us on Pigskin Dispatch. It's also on social media outlets of Facebook, 
Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all your daily sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. It was just another ordinary day in the offices of the Pittsburgh Guardian newspaper circa 1924. But for Marla Delft, assistant editor, everything was about to change. For she was about to discover the awesome attractiveness of Row 1 brand retro sports paraphernalia items thanks to Orville Mulligan, sports writer. And there it is. Wow, Orville, that's really the bee's knees. Isn't it just? A poster-sized replica of the actual 1909 World Series program cover. I can see that. But where did you get it? And where'd you get it framed? I ordered it from the Row 1 website where over 6,000 items of sports memorabilia from the 1880s to the 1990s are available for reproduction in multiple sizes and in several different materials, with over a dozen styles of frame to choose from for prints like this. Well, I'm sure Mr. Delft would love to put up more of these in the office, but I'm equally as sure they're beyond this newspaper's budget. (laughs) Not at all, my dear Marla. See for yourself. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. SportsHistoryNetwork.com slash row one. Oh my, these are good prices. Oh, and look at this stuff. Oklahoma, Nebraska football. College basketball art. Michael Jordan items. And so it was that Marla Delft discovered the spondiferous magic of row one sports memorabilia arts and prints. You can too by visiting SportsHistoryNetwork.com slash row one. That's R-O-W-1. Number one today for access to the full Row One catalog of gallery prints and gifts like t shirts, long sleeve shirts, telephone cases, coffee mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Act today for a 15% discount off all prints with coupon code SHN15 and 20% off all other items with coupon code SHN20 at checkout. And keep your dial locked to the Sports History Network for the exciting chronicles of the 1920 sports world in Orville Mulligan, sports writer, coming soon.